Welcome, I'm Dr. Courtney, and as we approach this problem, we're going to use a powerful problem-solving approach that you can remember using the acronym IDEA. I for interpret, D for develop, E for evaluate, and A for assess. Let's see how it applies here. In this problem, we're given position as a function of time of a model rocket launch. And we're asked then to find an expression for the velocity, and we're further asked, well, when will that velocity equal zero? As we interpret the problem then, we can write, given position, y, as a function of time, and what we'll do is we'll use differentiation, to find an expression for the velocity as a function of time, and then uh, I guess we'll say and when the velocity is equal to zero. As we develop this problem, we will take a two-part approach. The first is to draw a picture representing what's happening in the problem. Now, fortunately for me, this does not have to be an artistic rendering, just an accurate representation of what's happening. Second, we'll make a point-by-point -point plan, which we will then follow when we evaluate the problem. So physically, we have a model rocket being launched from the ground, and it will rise to some peak height and fall back to the ground. Now that's an accurate representation, but perhaps a graphical approach will help us understand the problem a little bit better. So let's represent it another way as well. If we consider what's happening as a function of time on the x-axis and vertical position on the y-axis, when the rocket has not yet been launched, time is zero and the position is zero. It's on the ground. As soon as the rocket is launched and as time progresses, the rocket rises to a peak height and then returns to the ground. Now we are given the position function y of t equals bt minus ct squared. And we are further given values for b of 72 meters per second and c is 4.9 meters per second squared. Now I've changed the value of b a little bit so you can work this problem on your own later. A good first step in any physics problem is to consider the units. So we will check to make sure that we are in meters, kilograms, seconds, or MKS units. And if not, we will need to convert those values before using them. Then we'll recall y of t, which was given in the problem. And then we will compute the first derivative, dy dt, which will give us a function of velocity. Velocity as a function of time. Notice we haven't made any substitutions yet. Now that we have a general expression for the velocity, we will substitute for b and c, and if necessary, simplify. Now this was part a of the problem. As we consider part b, the question asks, well, when does the velocity equal to zero? Let's go back to our graphical representation for a moment. If the velocity is the first derivative of position versus time, that means it's the slope of this curve represented graphically. So the place where the slope is zero, if you see here, it's at the peak or the maximum height. So we expect then that that would also give us a way to measure the maximum height if we were asked that in this problem. What we can do, since we have a general expression for velocity of, as a function of time now, we will first set v of t equal to zero, and we'll solve for the time. So as we evaluate this problem, first of all, let's check our units. b is given to us in meters per second, and c in meters per second squared. So we're in MKS units already. Next, we'll recall our position function 
and then we will take its first derivative as a function of time. We can use the power rule of differentiation to do this. The first term, the derivative of bt, is just b. And the first derivative of the second term, this power of 2 comes down in front as a coefficient, so we have minus 2c, and then we subtract 1 from that power. So 2 minus 1 is 1, which we can represent as just t. So our expression for velocity as a function of time is b minus 2ct, which we can then substitute now for b and c so that we have 72 meters per second minus 4.9 meters per second squared times time. I forgot something, didn't I? I forgot that multiplier of 2. So we have 72 meters per second minus 2 times 4.9 meters per second squared times time. We can simplify that a little bit to 72 meters per second minus 9.8 meters per second squared times time. This is our general expression for velocity. Now the first derivative of position with respect to time is also referred to as the instantaneous velocity. Why? Well, look at this expression. It still has time in it. That means that the velocity is changing and it, a specific value is dependent on what time you're interested in. Now in part B of this problem, that was part A, we are asked about a specific time. We're asked for the time when the velocity is zero. So we will take this expression and set it equal to zero. If we add 9.8 meters per second squared times time to both sides, then divide through by 9.8 meters per second squared, we get the time is equal to 7.3 seconds. And so our answer is the velocity is zero at t equals 7.3 seconds. How do we know whether our answer is reasonable? There are a couple of things we can do. First of all, we will check the units. This is different from checking the units at, at the beginning of the problem to see whether we're in MKS. We will go back and see that when we substituted for b and c, we included the units of meters per second and meters per second squared. So as we solved the problem, we were doing unit analysis along the way. But let's double check. For our last calculation for time, we had meters per second divided by meters per second squared. And if we simplify that, we see that meters cancels, one term of seconds cancels, so we're left with one over one over seconds. If we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by seconds, we see that this equals seconds. Since we were looking for a time, the unit of seconds is appropriate. So this lends some confidence to our answer. What else can we do? Well, if we consider physically again what's happening in the problem, how fast is the rocket going at first? Well, that would be at time zero. So if we look at our velocity as a function of time and substitute zero for the time, we would get an initial velocity of 72 meters per second. If we approximate the acceleration due to gravity as 10 meters per second squared, we can estimate about how long it would take for the velocity to reach zero from that initial 72 meters per second. So we're going to consider the initial velocity over the acceleration due to gravity, which is approximately equal to 72 meters per second over 10 meters per second squared, and so that's equal to 7.2 seconds. So doing a rougher calculation, we come up with an answer that is very similar, the same order of magnitude, and in fact very close to the answer we got with our more accurate calculation. So between unit analysis and considering the physical behavior of the rocket in the problem, we have confidence that our answer is correct.